Hey, everybody, this is Lauren Delisa Coleman, and I am back with you again for another episode of the Inside Series that we bring you no place else but right here on film.io. And I'm really, really happy to bring to you. She's like kind of, you know, on the DL about it, but she's a multi hyphenate. And I'm really excited to be able to have her um, just share a lot of her experiences and um, just kind of successes. Um, Catherine Waddell, welcome to the Inside Series at film.io. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Great. Um, she is uh, an actress and producer, but you're going to hear like a lot more about um, what she does and what she um, has worked on both simultaneously and has, you know, coming up. So let's just kind of jump right into it. Catherine, we're going to start, um, I guess, with Balloon Animal. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love for you to be able to first give us um, like a synopsis, because that's how we always kind of kick things off um, about what it is. And then, you know, we'll kind of get into um, some of the nuances about it and the actual like kind of creation of it. So Balloon Animal uh, is about a girl named Poppy Valentine who has grown up in a traveling circus, uh, her family's circus, the Valentine Traveling Circus, and her specialty is making balloon animals. And she's 24 and she's basically trying, she's at a crossroads in her life where she's you know, do I stay with the traveling circus or do I kind of set off on my own and make my own path and actually settle down? Um, so that's that's the, the gist of the film. And I actually play Poppy Valentine. So it's a really exciting project um, for me personally. And so I guess tell me a little bit um, about how you came to be cast in this and how it fits into, you know, just your larger production company and more. So, um, cause I think that that's, it's just really key. And I, I hate to do the whole, you know, Oh, because you're a woman doing X, Y, and Z. Um, <laughs> but you really have a lot of irons in the fire. And I think it's just, yeah. it's always really inspiring just to, to be able to hear how somebody, you know, has come to, um, you know, handling multiple responsibilities simultaneously and like you're so zen about it <laughs> so yeah. how, did, how have you like hooked all that up okay so I was uh or I am an EP on a film called Dinner in America which was at Sundance and was in the main competition and I also um act in it and the one day that I went on set to film my scene, I was just like so inspired by it. And it was just like so much fun and so just great. And I walked away from that and I was like, I think it's time to make my own feature film. Um, and I had been working with my um, creative partner, M. Johnson, on a couple of other projects. And I went to her and I was like, I think it's time for us to make a feature film. And, you know, I think as an artist, you make a lot of art for yourself. You're like, what do I want to watch? What would I like to be in? What do I want to see? And I just came up with this visual in my head. I was like a girl with blue hair who makes balloon animals. I've never seen it before. I don't know where to take it. I don't know what about it. Um, but I know I want to be in it. I know I want to create the story. And I know I want M to write it and direct it. So I went to her and I was like, I have this idea and it's funny because she was like, no, I hate it. I don't want to do it. It's not for me. And I was like, no, no, really, it's going to be great. I like spent a whole weekend trying to convince her because we were at the Portland Film Festival with another one of our films. Um, she wasn't into it. And then two months later, out of the blue, I got a text from her and she's like, I have nothing going on. Let's make it. And so we set about... Um, creating it. And we sat down and we, I mean, we would do like six, seven hour um, Skype phone calls, mapping out the story and she would go and she would write it and we'd come back and we'd edit it together. And out of that, it just made sense at that point to start our production company off of it. You know, so we were like, it's finally time to like come together and make this like a true partnership because we love working together and we work so well together um, and Balloon Animal was that first logical step. And out of that came First Balloon Films. Got a promo, yeah. right? Yeah, um, yeah. So how did you guys kind of go about 
um, raising money for this film. And you know what, though, even before you answer that, because I don't think enough is discussed about the um, the kind of like selling process or the pitching process, even if it was somebody who you knew. Right. Yeah. Um, was that daunting to, you know, really have a vision? And then the person with whom you want to work is like, you know what, I'm not feeling it. And then comes back to you. That's, you know, it was a great thing that doesn't always happen. How yeah. do you, or do you have a particular method of kind of, you know, either stalking somebody or just kind of setting it up so that, you know what, this is, this is what this is about. You know, I mean, I think we've all seen this process maybe fictionalized or something on like entourage or something, but when yeah. you're really in the throes of it, like how, yeah. how does that go or how's it go for you? I mean, there's like, I think anyone in the industry can tell you that it, it, it can go a, a myriad of ways, but you know, M and I, um, we, we obviously created a package, right? You, you create a mock budget, you, and you make a lookbook, you know? So we had the top, sheet for our budget and we had a lookbook um and we had ourselves you know I think like some of the biggest selling points is not necessarily sometimes the package but like it's us you're investing in us you're investing in our career you're investing in what we're going to do next right so we obviously had um a package a lookbook and contacting our contact sending Facebook messenger messages calling people and being like we're creating this. Um, we want to send you our package and you can let us know what you think. And to your point, it is very daunting because you are putting your um, an unfinished creative vision out there, right? Like you don't have the movie finished to show everyone, look how good we are. Or look how good it's going to be, right? You might have reels. You might have other things that you've done in the past, but you are asking someone to give you money on something that doesn't exist yet. Right. And so we definitely, I mean, we would send the script out and this is like one of our like horror stories, but we send the script out to a potential um, investor or like really a broker um, for investors. And he read the first 30 pages and we have uh, one of the main characters is called Dark. And he came back and he wanted to give us notes on the script. And he said, I don't really like the name Dark have you considered naming him Dirk instead with an I instead of an A? And you have to sit there and you have to be like, uh, yeah, you know, wow. That's, I mean, maybe potentially we could do that, <laughs> you know, but like, that's the kind of stuff that you, that you deal with and that you kind of have to smile and, and sit through because you're trying to have this end goal that you get to. And so how long did that process take you? Well, it was quite tumultuous because of the pandemic. You know, we started looking for investors about right before the pandemic started, like February, like January, February, March. Um, I went to Sundance that year um, with Dinner in America. And I was there and I was obviously pitching and, and networking and stuff. And then the pandemic happened. And basically no one was making movies and no, everyone was like too scared to kind of invest in indie unless you were a, a sure thing. Right. And we weren't a sure thing. Um, so it took us a long time. It took us about six months through private investors um, to find it's it. It's not that and long we, though. Really? Not. I mean, when you listen to other people's stories, as I do, I mean, it can take a long, 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 long time. Yeah, but we only got half the budget that we wanted. And that was like one of those um, moments where it's like, we can wait and we can spend those years looking for the money, um, but we didn't want to wait. And so, you know, we had a lot of those meetings where we sat down and we were like, how can we rework this? How can we rework the script? How can we you know, because we're already reworking the script to accommodate COVID because you can't have, you know, that many people on set or, you know, you have to find more money in the budget now to do the testing and all of like, you know, right, the right. accessories and stuff. So you're already like redoing a bunch of things. Can we make a film at half the budget? Yes, there is a version of this. It may not be the 
extreme version, but it's still a great version. It's still a beautiful movie. We still did amazing things. You know, we had to postpone twice because of fears and everything like that and mask mandates and just being like, what's going on? Are we in lockdown? Are we not in lockdown? You know, so it was it was a crazy time. So you're going along with this and you end up, you know, creating it and it's in Tribeca Film Festival and all that. And then at what point, though, were you asked to be brought on as an exec producer of, you know, we need to do something because we were talking a bit offline about this. And there was like this simultaneous kind of almost fusion, which I I am happy to have you speak about because it just yeah. kind of I think is indicative of the fact we can't like kind of control things and then at w- one point you're waiting sitting like wondering okay we're in lockdown we aren't and then everything kind of converged at the same time so how yeah. did that happen one and then two how did you kind of balance it all you know time management wise yeah so balloon animal is actually in post-production we need to do something is the one that's at Tribeca oh okay my um, mistake No, no, no worries. Um, But yeah, so while we are looking for money for Balloon Animal, um, Bill Sturtz, who is one of the producers or one of the main producers on We Need to Do Something, um, who's actually also a producer on Dinner in America, who I met at Sundance. We have a nice um, friendship. He had called me up um, late summer when we're still kind of in the thick of it. And he had said, you know, I have this script, we need to do something and I want you to read it. Um, I think you would really like it. I think you can come on as an EP if you're interested. And I read it and it was like a no brainer for me, you know, and I was like, oh, this is going to be really good, you know, and the team that he was already like building was amazing. Um, But it was a stark contrast for me because that movie from the time he basically called me to the time they started shooting was maybe a month and a half, two months, not even. And that's like with pre-production. So I was just like, that's insane to me. You know, like the difference that he found it in a couple of phone calls, a couple of weeks and we were postponing, we were trying to find money, we were having to redo everything. Not that it wasn't easy for them, because, you know, they were dealing with the same um, onset issues that anyone who was filming was, you know, and and redoing, you know, COVID stuff. You know, that movie takes all place in a bathroom with like five people. So that's obviously COVID friendly and everything. And that's a very specific story (laughs) that works with this, you know. Um, but it was, it was, a, it was a stark contrast for me on connections, what you can get done, you know, um, the power of networking, just the power of also having other projects under your belt. And I just think in the industry it can go either way for you, you know, depending on who you are and where you're at and what's going on. Was that the first time you had ever um, exec produced a film? Uh, no, on Dinner in America, which was at Sundance last uh, 2020, I think, um, I was an EP on that. So you have been an exec producer, producer, actress, and you own your own production company. So it's really quite a lot, no? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe in sticking your hand in as many honey <laughs> pots as possible. <laughs> I think I think that's evident, right? So yeah. do you have a do you have a preference of you know role or does it really depend? You know, is it I is mean, it great to kick back and be exec producer and then maybe not have as many kind of logistical concerns? Or I mean, how does that kind of go? Or do each obviously um have its own kind of special set of challenges and special set of benefits? Yeah. Um, I definitely think it's the last one. I think. I mean, my passion is acting, right? Like I wrote Balloon, or we wrote Balloon Animal for myself, right? Because I was like, I want to act in a feature film, you know? Um, But I love, I do also love producing. I do love the logistics. I love the to-do lists. I love taking a project from beginning to end. Um, But then it's also great to be able to sit back as an EP and like throw your name in the ring and be like, I really love this film in this script and I want to be part of its creation. Um, but then everyone else does the work, you know, so right. it's just, everything has its 
it's like you said, it's benefit and its own challenges. It sounds like though, not only are you obviously talented enough to do all these different scenarios and you're obviously great at balancing them time-wise, but it sounds like a lot has also come from a wide network where, you know, you really have put yourself out there and you have a reputation um, so that things, you know, come to you, or if you need something, you know, kind of where to, to go to get it or put, put it out there. What suggestions might you have, if any, um, for filmmakers who, you know, might want to be able to spread their wings a little bit more like you have, or just maybe just in general, want to be able to kind of expand their networks, especially in a time of, I don't know. I want to say post pandemic, but it's still kind of pandemic. You know, there's yeah. only but so much you can do, you know, networking wise across Zoom and maybe even after, you know, I mean, I don't think we really all know just yet if people still hold out, you know, non vaccinated versus vaccinated. You know what I mean? How how yeah. are you kind of seeing yourself either leveraging relationships, creating new ones, whatever. Cause I think that's everything in a business like this, right? It's not like yeah. becoming a physician where you have a, a direct path. And then once you're there, you know, you're there, boom. It's not like that. I, I mean, I think for me, and I've always like, you know, when everyone, when anyone has asked for advice, I'm just like, as you said, it's like, it's networking. You just have to take opportunity that comes to you. That is obviously safe and the right choice for you, like creatively or whatever. But I think sometimes what can happen is that you think you only have one identity in the industry. Like I am only this, I am only an yeah. actor or yeah. I am only yeah. a producer or I only do this. I feel like when I stepped out of that when I was younger and I was like, I just like making films and I just want to be on set. Um, then you are able to do anything, right? I still enjoy PAing because I just want to be on a set watching people make films. I don't need to be at the, you know, top of the pole to be happy, you know? And so if you prepare yourself to be ready for anything, if you know everything there is to know about film, if you're doing this job and that job, you're A, getting the opportunity to network, and then B, you're just also getting the opportunity to be a part of creation in any format, you know? Um, so that's what I would say to everyone. I'd just be like, be ready with open arms to receive anything go to those parties, go, talk to those people, you know, step out of your comfort zone, PA maybe, you know, even if you're an actor or, you know, whatever, just always, you know, step outside your comfort zone and see what, see what you can do for yourself. I think that's really great um, advice because it sounds like, you know, it obviously is coming from both attitude and mindset. And if you see yourself as bigger, then that's, you know, kind of what has to happen eventually. Yeah. Um, so what are your plans now for balloon animal then? Are you going to um, be submitting it to a number of different um, festivals? When do you think post is going to be completed? Like what's kind of the the master like take over the world plan? Well, um, so balloon animal should be finished almost like any day now, actually, which ah, is really quickly. exciting. Okay. Because, you know, it was it was supposed to be filmed twice before, except the pandemic. You know, we were supposed right. to film uh, October 2020 and then December 2020. And then we didn't get to film until March 2020 because um, we were trying to make it to this film festival circuit, this upcoming film festival circuit. Um, and by everyone's hard work, we've been able to finish it in time. Um, so we'll definitely start with the film festival uh, route like any, um, you know, good indie wood. It's funny that you mentioned right before we started recording the Bentonville um, Film Festival because that's actually where my dad's family is from. And he has been pestering me being like, you need to submit to Gina Davis's Film Festival. And I'm like, we will, we will. So that's really exciting, uh, especially for him. He loves it. Um, so yeah, yeah they so had like such a great that. selection of um of films and just the vibe just seems like, I mean, even yeah. virtually the vibe is just like fun and energetic, high yeah. energy, you know, you can feel it. Yeah. Every festival I has actually, its own kind of personality, right? And some are yeah. just a little bit more stoic. Others are obviously more grand. Um, yeah. But that one is just like, it's somehow kind of fun meets festival. I don't know, but it just, it has yeah. a very interesting vibe. Maybe it's where it's yeah. based too. I mean, Arkansas, mm. you know what I mean? So it's going to have its own kind of 
flavor. Exactly, exactly. And I um, I actually got to meet Gina Davis at a Sundance once, and um, she is so beautiful. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, that would be that would definitely also be like a, a dream for us. We would be really happy with that. With that, but if you finish post now in in this month, like say, so, let's say it's August, then um, typically, how much time um, do filmmakers? Uh, kind of a lot before they actually can start submitting. So would you be looking at that wave of festivals that start like say January, February of 2022? Because it's too late to do the rest of the year or can you sneak in there? No, it's, it's, so it's always for like the year after. So we would, we're submitting right now for 2022, right? And so Sundance kicks, kicks off the season at the end of January. Um, And so it's, it's a balancing act because, a lot of these A-list film festivals like Sundance, for instance, needs a world premiere, but everyone doesn't tell you in order. So it's like right, you kind right, of have right. to make these sort of wonky executive decisions where you're like, you could get into a film festival that's maybe a B-list or whatever, but you're hoping to get into an A-list. So you can't necessarily say yes to the B because you're waiting for the A. And so you're kind of like, especially they need a world premiere. And so you're like, ah, you know, um, so it's 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 all a waiting game. It's a balancing act. Um, but we're confident. We love the movie. We're, we're really proud. It's it's stunning. Em did a beautiful, beautiful job. Um, her creative vision is, is gorgeous. And so we're just kind of we're going to see. We're excited. Great. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add, Catherine? Um, no, just be on the lookout for it. Be on the lookout for um, We Need to Do Something, which will come out on demand and in theaters September 3rd. And um, be on the lookout for Dinner in America, which will be eventually released. And, of course, Balloon Animal. You are doing your thing, Catherine. Like, it's just like one thing after the other, right? I'm trying. I'm trying. Absolute (laughs) multi-hyphenate. Well, thank you so much with everything that you have going on for for taking the time to be able to talk to us. We really appreciate it. And thank Mm -hmm. all of you for watching. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Don't miss the very next one. This has been the Inside Series only here at Film.io. And I am Lauren Delisa Coleman.